Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about the induction of labor and this topic I will deal in three parts. In part one, I will be discussing about what it is, what all indication and contraindications are there, in which all condition we can perform induction and in which all we can avoid it. And in second part, we will discuss about the parameters, the criteria for the induction. And in last third part, we will discuss about its uh, different method. Okay. So, here in this part, we will discuss what is induction of labor, IOL. So, induction, the word means initiation, initiation of uterine contraction. It means the labor process is not started yet. But there are some condition wherein the continuation of pregnancy is quite dangerous for mother as well as for the fetus. So to avoid that, we can discontinue the pregnancy and we can initiate the uterine contraction. Thereby, we can uh, go through with the vaginal delivery. So to initiate the labor process and to initiate the uterine contraction, we use certain uh, artificial mean to start uh, this labor process. So there is one more term that is augmentation of labor, uh, which is quite different from this induction because in augmentation, the labor, labor process is already started, but it is not that much intense to deliver out the fetus. So in augmentation, we accelerate the uterine contraction by giving some uh, means. So to increase the uterine contraction which is already being started is the augmentation of labor. But when the period of viability is exceed and the labor is not started yet and we need to start the uterine contraction is the induction of labor. We use artificial means, different methods, medical method or surgical method through which uh, we can initiate the uterine contraction. We can initiate the labor process and terminate the pregnancy once it reaches the viability period. So first we'll see the indication in which all condition we can induce the labor process. And in these indication, the first condition is hypertensive disorder. If the woman have any uh, preeclampsia or eclampsia, then we can't wait for the condition to land in severe. So before the condition goes worsen, we induce the labor process and uh, deliver out the fetus previously because hypertensive disorder may compromise the fetus very badly. Okay, If the woman have any uh, medical complication like uncontrollable diabetes, mellitus is there or any renal diseases are there, then again the fetus get compromised. So to avoid that, we can induce the labor process. If the woman have any antipartum hemorrhage where the placenta get separated previously, okay, premature separation happens because if the placenta gets separated more, then the more bleeding would be happen and the fetus get compromised uh, because of placental insufficiency. So to avoid that, we can uh, deliver the fetus artificially by inducing the labor process. And suppose if the intrauterine growth retardation is there, where the fetus is already uh, growth retarded, where the growth is not taking place at a proper pace, then we can't continue the pregnancy because there is no mean. So at that time also we can induce and take out the fetus. And if intrauterine fetal death happens, where the fetus is already dead inside in the uterine cavity, then again, these fetal tissues can enter into the maternal circulation and disturb the circulatory uh, changes in the mother and can cause DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, where more clots can form and disturb the maternal circulation. So to avoid that complication, we can discontinue the pregnancy and induce the labor process. If post-term pregnancy is there, where the pregnancy already crosses the 40 week of gestation, then there is no need to continue the pregnancy because there is no mean. If we continue the pregnancy, then chance of mycorium aspiration would be increased. 
less amniotic fluid can reduce the fetal movement and many more complications can happen. So in such condition also we can discontinue the pregnancy in post term pregnancies and if premature rupture of membrane happens where the labor process is not started yet but membrane gets ruptured earlier then in such condition the bacteria that present in vaginal flora can ascend up and infect the fetal membrane chorion and amnion and can lead into the chorioamnionitis. So to avoid that infection or inflammatory process we can induce the labor process once the membrane get ruptured. So these are certain indication where we can initiate or induce the labor process and allow the fetus uh, to deliver out vaginally. Now what all contraindications are there in which all condition we uh, can't induce the labor process, we can't initiate the labor process. So as our goal is to deliver out the fetus vaginally, so in all condition where the vaginal delivery is not possible at all, these all are absolute contraindication for IOL. Like if malpresentations are there, where the fetal eye is transverse and in oblique, where it is not being corrected and uh, we can't make the fetus to lie in longitudinal, then uh, we can't go for the vaginal delivery because the fetus lie in transverse and in oblique manner. So it is not possible to deliver the fetus vaginally. In similar manner, if contracted pelvis is there or CPD is there, where the pelvic, pelvic inadequacy is there and in cephalopelvic disproportion, either the fetus is too big, macrosomia is there or maybe the pelvis is not adequate to deliver out the fetus vaginally. And suppose if the woman had previous cesarean section, classical cesarean section, where the upper segment is already weakened and if we initiate the uterine contraction, there may be a chance of scar rupture. So in history of cesarean section as well, we can't induce labor process. And there are certain conditions uh, which already block or obstruct the normal birth canal where uh, suppose if pelvic tumor are there, tumors obstruct the normal birth canal, they don't provide enough space to deliver out the fetus. In similar manner, cancer of cervix is also there and even though we don't want to disturb that cancerous cells as well, if the placenta is also low lying, placenta previa is there or vasa previa is there where the placenta or either the fetal uh, vessels are uh, placed at a lower segment, then these all condition normally anatomically block the birth canal where we can't allow the fetus to come out through vaginal route. Okay, tumors are there, cancer cells are there, placenta is low lying, vessels are low lying, then this is mechanically obstructing this uh, birth canal and there we can't allow the fetus to come out. So, in these all condition, we can't induce the labor process. If genital herpes infection is there, where the birth canal and the vulva is already infected. So if we suppose to deliver out the fetus vaginally, then it can infect the fetus as well. So we can't allow the fetus to deliver out through vaginal route. And suppose if umbilical cord prolapse happens, then in such condition also we can't allow the fetus to come out because we can't either reinsert the cord into the vagina and we take out the fetus. So it is not possible. So these are the contraindication where we can't allow the fetus to come out vaginally because our aim or purpose is to deliver out the fetus vaginally by induction of labor. And in such condition, uh, we can't allow the fetus to come out through this birth canal. So these are the contraindication. Now by this induction of labor, what impact can be happen on mother as well as the fetus that uh, if we inducing the labor, sometime the induction goes very long. So there may be a chance of prolongation of labor process and that can exhaust the woman very badly. And thereby, uh, sometime the induction of labor uh, may lead into the increased operative interference because of this prolongation of labor process. And uh, by that, uh, the use of force and the ventus can be more 
or sometime even if it is not successful if the induction fails then even uh, cesarean section can be happen so operative interference would be more and that all may lead into the psychological disturbances in mother and sometime if we didn't calculate the gestational age properly then this may lead into the uh, premature labor as we didn't know the exact gestational age and we induce prematurely then this can cause premature labor and premature baby and thereby the lung immaturity can happen in the fetus that may lead into the hypoxia as well so these are certain impact that can happen in induction of labor on mother and fetus so in this lecture we have discussed with the uh, induction of labor what it is their indication and contraindication and the impact of induction of labor in mother and the fetus and in next part we'll discuss about the parameters the criteria that need to be fulfilled before we induce the labor thank you